very good morning students in today's costing class we'll be understanding a concept called cvp analysis cvp stands for cost volume and profit analysis do you think there is any relationship among these three factors cost volume and profit these three factors are interrelated for example if the company's cost is increased the company's volume will go down when company's volume will go down the profitability will go down alternatively if the cost goes down the product will become cheaper and when product will become cheaper more customer will be buying it so volume will go up and with increased volume profitability will go up too so this analysis is called cvp analysis as we understand there are three crucial factor called cost volume and profit now let's see what are the assumptions cvp analysis holds the cvp analysis is based on certain assumptions which may or may not be true in today's scenario but this is how it is the first assumption says the fixed cost will not change in totality but as we understand that with higher volume fixed cost per unit goes down so we can say that fixed cost in totality will not change but per unit fixed cost will not be fixed as and when volume will change so is the per unit fixed cost so my first assumption is that fixed cost will not change the second assumption says that variable cost per unit will remain same the total variable cost will get changed with increased or decreased volume but per unit variable cost will remain same our third assumption says that selling price per unit will remain unchanged no matter what so if volume will go up or down the total sales cost will go up or down but the sales price per unit will not change our fourth assumption says there is no closing stock involved whatever we are producing we are selling it that's why there is no closing stock involved and last but not the least it says there will be no change in the product mix as well as sales mix whatever mix of product company is using right now will keep using it and so is the sales mix whatever proportion a company is using to sell a product it will remain same there will be no difference in the sales mix so these are certain assumptions which cvp follows you have to really remember those assumptions not only for practical examinations but also for your practical scenarios the assumption is very important for us to understand because cvp believes there is no other external factor which impacts the profitability so the only factor which is impacting profitability is the change in volume and cost that's why we have seen that under assumptions all other factors are neutralized now when we understand the theory of cvp let's take a step forward and understand the concept of cs ratio the cs ratio which is a short form of contribution to sales ratio and the formula is contribution divided by sales multiplied by 100 now cs ratio is a ratio which tells us how much is the percentage of our contribution over our sale so if my company is selling at 100 so if my selling price is 100 less variable cost that is 80 so our contribution in this example it's going to be 20 Now, when contribution is twenty and sale is hundred, how much is the CS ratio? That's going to be twenty divided by hundred multiplied by hundred. This is equal to twenty percent. 
So CS ratio is contribution to sales ratio. Now the question arises, what is the significance of CS ratio? The contribution to sales ratio tells us how much is the profitability we are earning on sale after recovering our day-to-day -day expenses. So our variable costs are nothing but our day-to-day -day expenses which a company spend on producing a good or a service. So the percentage of our contribution on sale is called CS ratio. Now as we have discussed the formula of CS ratio and we understand the significance of CS ratio also. Now let's try to understand how that assumption will come into picture when it comes to CS ratio. Now as we have discussed that if sales is 100, the variable cost is 80, that gives us contribution. of 20. In this example, if we have to calculate CS ratio, that's going to be 20 divided by 100, that is 20%. Just to take it forward, if we reduce fixed cost from here, let's say 8 is our fixed cost, so our profitability will be 12. So this is how we calculate, we make the cost sheet under marginal costing system. So the first thing which we calculated was CS ratio, that was contribution divided by sales. In, in the example, if we do not give this information, the question only gives you contribution and the question gives you sale, can we calculate the missing figure called variable cost? Yes. So it's very important for us to remember this cost sheet as it is. Even if question hides certain information, it's a missing figure question, you can still calculate the other figure if you remember this cost sheet. For example, if contribution is given and sales is given, we can calculate the variable cost. If question gives you contribution and question gives you fixed cost, we can still calculate the fixed cost. I would suggest that try to calculate those missing figures as many times as you can. It will improve your understanding of the concept. In this example, let's say CS ratio is given as 80%. So that's the information question has given you. The sales is 100. Now these two information given, can we calculate the contribution? Let's see, our CS ratio says our contribution divided by sales is equal to CS ratio, which is in this case is 0 0.80. We do not know contribution, but we know that our sales is 100 and that is equal to 0.80. That means how much is my contribution? 100 multiplied by 80, that is $80. So our contribution in this example is going to be $80. This is how we can calculate the missing figure question when it comes to CS ratio and the other figures which are related to that. After having the conceptual clarity of CS ratio and the missing figure, it's time for us to understand another concept called break-even point. The break-even point is a point where company is not having any profit and company does not incur any loss also. That means our total sale is equal to our total cost. This concept is called break-even point. A point where company is breaking even. They are not having any profit, they are not having any loss. There can be two methods of calculation of break-even point. Let's understand what are those two methods. The first method says calculate the break-even point in units. The formula of calculation is 
fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. When you use this formula called fixed cost divided by contribution per unit, that gives us the break-even point in units. In examination, if they ask you how to calculate break-even point in value, dollar value, there can be two methods. One, you can take this break-even point in units and you can multiply this with the selling price. The another method would be through a formula which says break-even point in dollar value. The formula is fixed cost divided by CS ratio. When you use this formula called fixed cost divided by CS ratio, that gives us the break-even point in dollar value. Please be careful in examination. If the question specifically asks about unit, then use this particular formula. If question asks about the value, then please use this formula. Do not get confused and do not solve the question in hurry. Please read it carefully. If question is asking for BP in units or they are asking about BP in value. I hope we are clear about this concept called break-even point. Once we understand the concept of break-even point, there is another related topic which is very close to break-even. As we understand that break-even is a point where total cost is equal to total sales value. That means all our fixed cost as well as variable costs are recovered at this level. If my company still sells above break-even point, what will happen? The company will have profit but up to an extent. It is not infinite. Let's assume it's a manufacturing concern. Up to an extent, the fixed cost will remain constant. But after some time, the fixed cost will rise further. So margin of safety is a concept which we shall be discussing now. The concept of margin of safety says, in short, we call this MOS. So margin of safety is a point where my sales minus break-even sale. As we understand that all our costs been recovered at break-even point. If we still sell above break-even point, our company will be in a safety zone which is called margin of safety. This margin of safety only still there in company for some time. It is not infinite. After some time, break-even point will again change. Then your margin of safety will change again. But up to an extent, we can say this, sales minus break-even sale is equal to margin of safety. What if we had to calculate the percentage of margin of safety? In that case, what we will be using the formula? Margin of safety percentage is equal to sales minus break-even sale divided by sale. When we will be using this formula, that will give us the percentage of margin of safety. Again, to have better understanding of the concept, if question gives you sales and question gives you margin of safety percentage, we should know how to calculate break-even sale. If question gives us margin of safety and break-even sale, we should know how to calculate sale. So all these are missing figure question. More you practice those concepts, better will be your understanding. So that's about the concept of margin of safety. Now as we have discussed the concept of CS ratio, break-even point and margin of safety, now let's try to understand one more concept which says sales to earn desired profit. If a company is particular about how much profit they are looking for, then the question arises how, how much a company should sell in order to have that particular profit. We call this concept sales to earn desired profit. 
what we have to understand how much should a company sell in order to get this much profit. Let's see what is the formula. We call this sales to earn desired profit. The formula is fixed cost plus desired profit divided by CS ratio. This formula will tell us how much should be the dollar value of sale if a company wants to achieve this much profit. Alright. For example, a company's fixed cost is $50,000 and company wants to earn desired profit of $20,000. The company's CS ratio is 70%. Can we calculate the sales to earn desired profit? Now that gives us $70,000 divided by 70% or 0.70. So we can say this is our sale value. This concept is called sales to earn desired profit. If a company wants to achieve this much profit, how much should they sell? One more point to be considered. In example, in examination, if question asked, how much should be the unit sale? How many unit a company could sh should sell in order to have this much profit? then CS ratio will be replaced by contribution per unit. Very similar to what we discussed in the break-even formula. If a question asks you how much should be the sales in unit to earn this much profit, use contribution per unit. If question says how much should be the dollar sales value, use this CS ratio. That's all about it's all about the concept of sales to earn desired profit. Now we have discussed so many formulas regarding break-even, CS ratio, margin of safety and sales to earn desired profit. Wouldn't that be good if we understand the same concept again, but this time with the help of graphs. In examination also, the graphs may come into picture and then you should understand how to create graphs of all this CVP concept which we have just discussed. So now it's time for us to understand how to create graphs. So students, now let's make graph and do the same thing what we have done with the help of formula so far. Let's make first graph which is called break even chart. As the name suggests, this chart will tell us the break-even point. Let's try to draw this. This is 0x-axis and this is called 0y-axis. Let's put the unit on 0x-axis and on 0y-axis let's put cost and sale. We understand the fixed cost line is always parallel to 0x-axis as it does not change with the level of unit. So when we have to create a line called fixed cost that's going to be parallel to 0x-axis. Let's try to create one more line which is called a variable cost line. Instead of drawing another line for variable cost, we can start this line from here and we can call this total cost line. As we have already done the fixed cost here, above that what we are doing is, it's going to be total cost, that's fixed cost plus variable cost. The sales line will start from the origin, that's going to be upward, as we are assuming that with level of unit, the sales will go up to a point where total cost and sales cuts each other. What do we call that? Exactly, we call this break even point. If we join this here, we get, we get that break even in units. If we try to join it here, we will get a point break even in dollar value. 
the difference between sales and total cost is called profit if a company is selling up till here the difference between break even and sale is called margin of safety so all concept what we have discussed so far you can see in the graph just to revise once again on zero x axis we put the units on zero y axis we put the dollar value cost and sale the fixed cost line is going to be parallel to zero x axis because the cost does not change with level of activity it's a straight line parallel to zero x axis then the sales line will start from origin and will go upward as and when unit will increase so is the sale the variable cost line will start after fixed cost and then will be called total cost it will also have an upward trend because with level of unit the variable cost also goes up a point where sales and cost cuts each other we call that break even point if we join it on zero x axis we get break even point in units if we add it on zero y axis we we'll get that break even in dollar value the difference between sale and total cost is called profit the difference between sales and break even is called margin of safety this is how we can create a chart called break even chart now the another chart which is very very similar to this chart is called contribution chart all line in this contribution chart will remain same what we have drawn for break even here one more line will be there so this is our total cost line this is fixed cost line this is our sales line all lines are same as this the only difference is that from zero or origin there will be one more line upward and we call this line as variable cost in this chart we did not draw a particular variable cost line instead we draw a line called very total cost in this chart the question is asking about contribution and our formula is sales minus variable cost that's why the line will start from origin called variable cost the difference between sales and variable cost is called contribution so this is what we call contribution chart the third chart which we will be making is called pv chart pv stands for profit volume chart again let's make a zero x axis we have zero y axis i'm sure in mathematics you may have studied that anything below zero is a negative figure so ideally all our cost should come below zero the purpose of pv chart is to just tell the profit and loss slightly different than what we have drawn so far on zero x axis we'll put sale our fixed cost should go below zero and it's a negative figure where my total cost line cuts my sales that becomes a break even point anything above origin it's profit anything below this point is loss so in this example this area will tell us profit and this area will tell us loss a break even point the total cost and sales is cutting each other we call that break even point above that we have profit below that we have loss this chart is called profit volume chart so i hope by now we are clear about the concept of cost volume profit a concept which try to a concept which clarifies the relationship among three factor cost volume and profit how cost volume and profit impacts each other considering or assuming that all other factors are neutralized those concept may or may not be relevant in practical life but this is what is assumption all about so cvp primarily 
deals with margin costing. It tried to clarify the concept of contribution to sales, CS ratio, break even point, margin of safety, sales to earn desired profit, and the graphs. That's all about a concept called CDP analysis. I shall see you in the next class with a new concept. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much.